everybody. Um, I am Brooke and I'm the owner of The Junk Parlor down here in Centerville, Iowa. And I'm hopping on here today just to share you, with you some design tips. Um, the Junk Parlor is an occasional shop and what that means is that I'm just open monthly. And my shop is actually open four days a month. It is Thursday through Sunday, the second Saturday of each month. So to figure that out, you find the second Saturday on your calendar and then I'm open Thursday through Sunday that weekend. Um, my shop is unique other than just being open monthly because every time you come in, the shop looks completely different. I move everything around, I bring in some new inventory, and I change out all of my displays. And I think one of the things that the customers enjoy about my shop is changing out my displays. So I think that um, design kind of comes naturally to me and I know to other people it does as well. And sometimes you might see something and you think that that looks really nice, but you're not really sure why it looks nice or how to recreate that in your own home. So I'm gonna go through about four different um, examples of setting up this dresser. And I picked a random assortment of things to use and different kinds of things to use to kind of give you some ideas of what you can do in your house. So to start out with, I just picked three jars because they were similar. This one in the middle is bigger. So one of the things that I find people do a lot of times is that they like these three items and so they put them on their dresser or table or buffet and they just leave them. They, they spread them all out because these are the three pieces that they like. And so what I would do a little bit differently is group things together. So I feel like you don't need to cover the whole entire flat surface. Um, what you can do instead is group things together. And odd numbered items normally look better. And so since we have three items and one of them is taller, that's naturally giving us um, a starting point. And so all I would do is move that bigger one to the back and then arrange these three, which you can just kind of see on the edge of your screen. There, I'll scoot it over a little bit. Um, and I actually kind of even staggered these smaller two jars so that one's a little bit in front of the other. And you can play around because one has a lid, one doesn't, this one has black, and what's in the items to see what looks the best. Um, but this is what I think um, is a better design layout for the top of the dresser than to have them all three spread apart. So that is one thing that you can do to make a pleasing design or pleasing vignette is to group your items together. Now those three jars were all pretty large and so they didn't look terrible spread out on the dresser um, because they were more proportional. So for this example, I'm showing you some items that are a little bit smaller and they just look miniature on this dresser. And so what we are going to do is basically the same thing. We're going to group the three items together um, on one side. So I talked about how three or odd numbers looks better. And you kind of think about that on your space as well. So the dresser, you're imaginarily cutting it up into thirds. And so we want to kind of keep our decor on one third of the dresser if we are doing a little grouping, which I think looks better. Now, these three items, we could um, stagger them like I did the jars, okay? But again, these guys are very small. Um, on the dresser and it's always nice to have varying heights. So with that first example, the jar um, in the back was already naturally taller and so we want to create some height. So one thing that you might notice that's really popular are the books, whether they're books that don't have the binding on them or books that do have the binding on them. Um, you can, if you don't like the color, just make it so the pages are facing out instead of the cover. And then that kind of disguises some of the color um, that is on the cover. The books that I have um, are missing their cover or they're wrapped in something that is very neutral anyway. 
And so we are going to create different heights since our items are all the same and we don't naturally have um, heights. So we always want to have something that is going to be the tallest item in the back. And then if you notice, I am not setting the cup right in the middle. I am setting it off to the side of the book. Again, it just cause, um, creates a little bit of visual interest. And then I'm going to take another smaller stack of books that's shorter, kind of like the staircase. And then our last item will just sit on the dresser. Okay, and so then we have created a more pleasing um, vignette this way. And um, I help my friend Amy sometimes, about now, it's only about once a year at her um, shop flower teak. And when you lay out your flowers in a flower arrangement, it's kind of the same thing. Tall, and then you basically zigzag down. And that is how she taught me how to do flowers. So it came very naturally to me because that's how I do my designs as well. So this is an example of things that are a little bit smaller, but it gives more visual presence on the dresser by grouping them together. And even though we added the books, they're still considered um, groups of three because the item that was on the book, visually that creates one column, one section, and so that's our one item. And then the next book and cup was our second one, and then the one by itself was our third. So I said that normally you don't want to have things just spread apart on a dresser. Now, these ironstone pitchers are a little bit different in the sense that they are more substantial, kind of like those jars in the beginning. And so, and they're all the same or very similar. They're the same theme. And so they don't look bad like this. Um, it makes an awesome presence. A lot of times on a shelf, people are gonna line things up. But to change it up a little bit, you can create um, the grouping again. This middle one is a little bit taller, which is again why I put it in the middle. If they were, if um, the pictures were three different sizes, you could do the gradation where you have taller on one end and smaller on the other. So just like we did our jars, we can group all three of those over in the corner. Again, our tallest one is in the back, and then these are not lined up perfectly, okay? They are staggered, so one's in front of the other, and that is visually more pleasing. Now, what we did last time is what we could do again as far as, you can't really see this back one. It's not like uh, making a, uh, quite as much of a statement. So again, we're gonna use books. We have bigger items this time, so we're going to use bigger books. And again, um, I kind of have all of the books angled um, and angled on the dresser. We're going to start with the back one in the, on the books. And I think this one is the fattest, so this one might actually look better. Okay, so you could do it that way. And I'm guessing that visually this way is going to look good as well. A little bit harder when I have a different viewpoint than you guys do. So by giving the back one height, we're creating more of an impact with our little vignette here. Okay, so I got one more to show you, and this one I'm going to add um, some greenery to and add a little bit of extra to give you a more finished um, idea. And how I display in the shop is going to be different than how you might do it at home. And the reason being is because in the shop, I'm trying to get as much inventory as I can on a piece of furniture um, because I need to sell it. And if I only have a couple things on a dresser and those items sell and I'm busy, I can't restock that area. So it's kind of like what I have is what I have. Okay, so this time I picked things that were different because so far I've showed you things that are related, they're the, they're, they're the same item. 
Um, and so I tried to pick different things. So let's say in your house, these things are your favorite and you wanna have them displayed in your living room, let's say, on a dresser, on a table. Well, your first um, thought might be to lay them out like this, but again, we want to do a grouping. And this bucket is naturally our tallest thing. And the scale, and actually I'll just keep doing it on the same side. So we got the bucket and the scale and the bowls. Okay, not bad on this one, but I'm not loving, oops, I just ran into the dresser. I'm not loving it. Um, I think there's too much brown. And so what I would um, do is maybe at this point split it up, okay? So since we've kept everything where it's on one third of the dresser, we're going to go ahead and venture over to the other side. So I'm gonna move this over. Okay, and then we know that we need to add some things to it. And because I'm not liking necessarily the brown on brown, and when I was playing with it before I got on here, um, I really, I tried different things where you have some of the bowls on the scale and some down, and I just, I couldn't make it work um, just using the three items. And so I decided to go ahead and pull in um, some other pieces. So I'm adding two of those books back over here. And then I'm adding some books over here. So repetition is key. Um, since we have some wood tones in a couple of the pieces, I wanted to kind of go black rusty on some things to tie it together. Since we have a couple books back here, I wanted to, to tie in the books on the other side as well. Um, and so I picked this horse head and I like the color and the feel that he brings. And That's a little bit better. Your view is a little bit angled. But I felt like, okay, now we're losing the bucket. So by um, trying to not lose the bucket, but I liked its placement, I decided let's add some greenery. I like the colors of these. Um, anytime your stems are too long, which I feel like all fake stems are now like a mile long and no one has um, bases that are that long. So you just bend them where you want. You can always straighten them later. And that helps them give a little bit um, of varying in height because this other, the bent part kind of wedges itself in your container. But the one kind of greenery, I just didn't like it. Needed some variance. So I added this taller one in it. So by having some height back here, this side is starting to look good. Now, what do I do over here? Well, we know we're gonna put the bowls over here to give this side a little bit of height. I want to tie in some more black rust over, over here. That has a big flash. But then I feel like we need something tall right here because I feel it's lacking a little bit. And we have green on this side. So I feel like we need some greenery on this side as well. So the nice thing about when I decorate, especially in the beginning of flipping the shop, is that I have the whole store to shop from. So if I need something that's tall, that's rusty, that's a certain color, I can normally go find it. Um, as it gets to the end, and I'm designing uh, my vignettes, the last couple pieces, then it gets a little bit harder and I kind of have to make what I have work, which is sometimes how it is in our own homes. And so we've got a little bit of height here, greenery here. And then I, I sometimes, for the most part, I don't like having a scale um, empty. And I have these cute little books that we used on the last um, vignette. And so I'm gonna add those. And then I have this cute little piece of architectural salvage. Um, and I'm gonna use that. So I hope that you can see 
the uh, whole vignette. And it's a little different um, on the camera than it is. The horse head is maybe a little more crazy than when from my angle. But there you have me creating a vignette. I wasn't worried about the back backdrop um, for this, but you could always hang stuff to make um, a space higher. So like if I wanted some height over here um, because I felt this side was too heavy, I could hang something really low um, on the wall. So I hope this gave you guys um, some ideas on how you can decorate in your own home. Um, if you enjoyed watching this, share it. Um, that'd help me get seen. I'd really appreciate it. And my next sale is April 12th through the 15th down here in Centerville, Iowa. So come to the junk parlor and check it out. Thank you.